question and answer with me, Bazooka Joe Valtellini. I just want to start off this question and answer with a big shout out to Devin Reed, who says, Bazooka Joe, I train people who are down in life, and I've been sober for the past uh, three years as of March 8th, and these videos are helping him pass on and learn um, and improve his life. So Devin, thank you for following along and passing this knowledge and this skill set um, in a positive direction. So thank you for that. As you know, I spend my life as a teacher for kids with special needs and disabilities. So passing kickboxing on, um, passing the positive message on is something I want to do with the sport. So thank you for that. Let's get into the question and answer. The first question is from Kony M who said, um, if I was scared or had fear before a fight, if so, what did I do to calm down? I think it's natural to have fear when going into a fight. It's a scary thing. Um, you're going in to knock someone out, someone's going to knock you out, and there's people watching. So you're going to be scared. But I think that's what makes fighting amazing. It keeps you alive is that nerves and that tension um, where you have that. And that's what allows you to excel um, and get and show um, that you're exceptional. And that's where you really become to shine. And some fighters have problems. And that's where you can't really teach this. You have fighters who just naturally shine in the ring under the lights. There's other people who break down because of the pressure and the nerves. So fighting isn't for everyone, but there are ways of training your mind, the way of training your body for that confidence. And it all comes with good mental training. Um, I think is your best friend in fighting. A big part of the game is psychological. So throughout your camp, you need to constantly um, confirm and, and reassure yourself that you're in better training than this person. Um, your camp, your coaches all have confidence in yourself and a good fighting career starts with confidence in yourself and people who surround you. So constantly change those negative thoughts. There's going to be tons of times where you're going to start thinking negative about the fight. Man, this guy's going to knock me out. This guy has so much experience and looking at my fights, um, I was fighting guys with you know, 100 professional fights while I only had five or six fights on my career. So mental game is very important. Constantly change those negative thoughts and turn it into something positive. So instead of thinking about, oh man, this guy has a lot of power in his hands, he might knock me out with his punches, you have to think about what you do well and how you're going to avoid that. And constantly visualize yourself winning. Uh, visualize your hand being raised and my guys, um, you know, uh, my main guy Troy Sheridan, you're going to see him every time he's done every round, every time he's done a pad session, he'll raise his hands, he'll, he'll keep his hands up just to get that feeling of being successful and you want to make sure you leave the gym being positive every day. So good question there. Uh, let's go on to question number two. I mentioned that Ernesto Hoos was one of my favorite kickboxers. Why not Rob Common? Um, and how is um, the Dutch style different from the so-called um, bazooka style that I've been teaching? So the difference between Dutch and bazooka kickboxing. Um, Ernesto Hoos is my favorite fighter. And why he's my favorite fighter is because he was the man um, in the era of the time I was watching. I was watching kickboxing when K1 and the heavyweights were dominating um, the whole scene. And at that point in kickboxing, there was only really... Um, two divisions. You had a heavyweight division as well as a lightweight, which was the K1 Max. So Ernesto Hoos was naturally one of my favorite fighters because he has good combinations, just like myself. Likes to use the left hook to the liver, follow his low kick. He has amazing highlights all over YouTube. He had one that I used to watch constantly. It was Ernesto Hoos highlight by uh, Damien, I believe. So watch that one out. It's all of his wicked low kick, high kicks, uh, good combination fighting. Why I didn't really like, I still think Rob Common's one of the best fighters, especially from Holland. It just wasn't in my era of watching, so a lot of times I will go back, watch a lot of the old Common stuff, develop and watch his low kick system. He has a wicked instructional video that I've watched, and it kind of inspired me to do my own instructional videos. So I am a big fan of Rob Common. It's just Ernesto Hoost um, was popular at the time. I was really into kickboxing. So the difference between bazooka kickboxing and Dutch style kickboxing. So I'll start off by ask, explaining what Dutch kickboxing is. And that's stereotypical, what they call Dutch kickboxing is that straightforward shell defense, constantly forward pressure, 
pressure and there's a lot of hands to low kicks. So they'll use a high guard shield, low kicks, and a lot of uh, punch to kick combinations. Yes, a lot of my style has that. A lot of my style, I've been known for good pressure fighting, good combinations, good low kicks. So by definition, you can say um, I do follow a Dutch style, but there's a lot of differences in my style. I, um, I like to be more versatile. I never really did it too much in my fighting career because my pressure fighting and my low kicks were so successful. But in the whole bazooka style teaching and training, um, it's all about creating distance. It's all about creating space and being versatile. Um, I don't want to be stuck to one type of defense. And you're going to see as um, the technical series advances, I don't just want shell defense. I develop parrying. I can develop head movement. Because boxing is a big part of the game, I feel you need to be able to change up the type of defense you block, counter, and attack with. So I feel the bazooka style will have a little bit more versatility in changing up. Um, I want my style to be a universal style. I want the bazooka kickboxing style to be successful in mixed martial arts. I want the bazooka kickboxing system to be successful in Muay Thai, in kickboxing, in a street fight. Anywhere you need to kick, punch, knee, elbow, clinch, the bazooka style um, is a lifelong process and that's what it is. There's no one way, we're constantly evolving, we're finding what's the best way and putting it into my style which is a good mix of things and the ability to change and diversify your attacking. Kick to punch, punch to kick, good knees, good distance. If I need to be a pressure fighter, I'll be a pressure fighter. If I need to move, fight on the outside, you should be able to adapt to everything. Let's move on to the next question. So those are some good questions this week. The next question, uh, what do I do for shin conditioning? Um, where it, there's a lot between smart training and getting injured. Conditioning for me, um, and you're going to hear it so many times, I do not run. People look at running as this big thing in conditioning. Um, I came from a health and physical education background, so I really applied good science and good training principles uh, to my camps and my career. So conditioning, I did a when I hit pads, I hit pads with full intensity. When I hit bag, I hit bag with full intensity. Um, everything I did had a purpose, and I and I trained. Um, to my limit. I don't, I'm not one of these people who would hit the bag and sit there and look around and see what the person besides me doing. You really have to focus in on your training and a lot of people think oh it's an hour training session or it's a two hour training session. They're looking at surviving the whole hour and finishing the two hour session and feeling good. Yeah I completed it but that's not how the way uh, you train your, your system in order to to fight. You need to train your system to constantly push itself at 100 percent. So if you're doing bag and you gas out on the first round that's a positive thing. You constantly need to keep pushing out that high pace, high volume, high intensity. So you might start off by 10 second blast and then it might go 20 second blast but you need to constantly move what they call that anaerobic threshold. Keep pushing yourself. Let your body produce that lactic acid that makes it shut down. That's what you want. You want to train your body to get so fatigued. So don't always think about surviving the two hour session. Focus on the current drill you're doing or the pad work or the bag work, fully exhaust yourself whether it's one minute and you build yourself up to survive a high paced fight rounds whether it's five three minute rounds or whether it's three three minute rounds whether you're fighting amateur or professional, build up that anaerobic tolerance in order to fight full pace, full conditioning for the full fight. Shin conditioning was the second part, the first part of this question. It's just constantly working and this is why running they say is good for you because it helps strengthen the bones in your legs. But for me it's bag work. If you're constantly hitting the bag, you're constantly hitting your shin on a, on a, a target which is going to um, help um, strengthen it and develop it. The more you spar, the more you train, the more you hit the bag, the more you hit the pads. That is your best way of developing your shins. A lot of people sit there and focus on you know the rollers on the shin, tapping your shins. If you're hitting good bag work, focusing Put rounds on with just kicks. Sometimes I go to the wall pad and I'll sit there and I'll literally kick the bag for round after round after round, changing up the intensity of my, my kicks. But it's just that constant repetition to strengthen the shins. Don't over focus. Sometimes once in a while we'll do some no shin guard sparring just to work on controlling and touching the shins. But to me it's 
constantly just kicking bags and pads. That's why I like bag work over running. One of my many reasons. There's one more question I'll quickly answer. Um, this is a big open-ended question. I'll try to answer it within a minute or so. Uh, Mr. Joe, how do I improve the cardio and stay explosive while dieting? Well, this comes from good planning in your training camp. A lot of people wait to the last minute to cut weight in their camp. If you know you're a fighter and you fight at my, in my weight class, I was a welterweight at 170 pounds. I used to walk around at 195 to 200 pounds, and this is what my current weight is. But I would spend eight to 10 weeks slowly bringing my weight down, a pound or two a week to slowly bring it down. 24 hours out to my fight, I would cut about 10 to 12 pounds of the last weight, which is just water weight. So you need to do your homework um, eight weeks out. Don't wait until the last minute to cut your weight. Two pounds a week, slowly bring it down. Do the prep work before. Don't wait to the last minute. It's like studying for a test. If you want to do well on your exam, you don't crash study the day before. Yes, it's important to do your work before. You probably crash study at the end, which is fine, like we do with our weight cut anyways. But do your homework early. This way you'll have the energy throughout your training camp. Also do your research on good foods to eat. Um, I'll do a question and answer. I'll bring in some of my, my strength and conditioning coach, Costa Cladianos. I'll bring him in. Uh, we're, we want to plan on doing a segment on strength training and um, strength and conditioning in combat sports. So we're going to pull him in, but uh, I'll bring him in for the, the, maybe the next question and answer, discuss diet in training. But you need to eat your carbohydrates, good balanced meals, and do your homework before. So there you go, question and answer, February 19th, more to come next week. I'm not too sure how the question and answer will work. I'll be in Chicago for Glory 38, which I'm really excited for. It's a stacked card. So I'll be in Chicago. Maybe in Chicago I can answer a few questions and then get it up on the channel. But make sure you tune in to Glory 38 Chicago. Um, it's going to be on UFC Fight Pass, is the Super Fight Series, and then ESPN will show the main card. The main event on the ESPN card, you have Saulo Cavallari against Vahitov, number three, which is going to be an exciting fight. I'm a low kicker, and that trilogy has a lot of low kicks um, back and forth in those fights. Fight I'm excited for. The main event on the Super Fight series, um, Benjamin Attic Boy versus Anderson Silva, another good uh, matchup. So make sure you check out Glory 38. Keep liking, keep subscribing, keep asking your questions. It's been a lot of fun sharing my knowledge with you guys. See you guys next week.